Some say AI agents are already running businesses while we sleep. Others call them smoke and mirrors. But in 2025, the evidence is finally undeniable. And today we'll put these so-called agents through three brutal tests. Multi-step tool use on real tasks, unscripted recovery when things break, and hours long autonomy without babysitting. We'll score them, compare them to 2024, and at the end, you and I will decide once and for all, are AI agents finally real? And I promise you, you are not walking away with only that too. Think of this like self-driving car levels, but for AI agents. Level one is impressive demos. Level five is full autonomy. Most agents today claim they're level four, but let's find out where they really stand. Test one will be tools. Can they chain together browsers, APIs, code execution, and documentation across five plus complex steps? We need 80% success rate to pass. This means booking a flight, researching options, comparing prices, handling payment forms, and confirming details, all without breaking the chain. Test two will be recovery. Here's where most agents die. When they hit a capture, when a website changes its layout, when an API times out, can they detect the failure, understand what went wrong and fix it themselves? We need 70% recovery success to pass. And test three will be uptime, or you can call it the real test. Can they run for hours without you babysitting them? We're looking for four plus hours of stable operation with less than one human intervention per hour. This is what transforms agents from expensive assistance into actual workforce replacements. First, multi-step tool use. Today's agents can do things like search for info, navigate a website, fill forms, and even write code, all chained together. Google's Gemini 2.0 Project Mariner is a prime example for this. As a Chrome extension agent, it understands and reasons across web elements like text, code, images, and forms, and then performs the tasks. In fact, Google reported Mariner hit 83.5% success on a real web task benchmark, which is an astonishing number for complex end-to-end -end tasks. Meanwhile, startups like R and toot agents like Ava that run entire multi-channel sales campaigns on autopilotartisan.co, orchestrating LinkedIn outreach, email personalization and follow-ups automatically. And on the research front, a June 2025 ArcSeef paper introduces MCP0, an active agent that built its own tool chain from a library of 2,797 tools, slashing token usage by 98% while maintaining accuracy doesn't that blow your mind? Because that surely blew mine. In short, the tools test is getting aced. Leading agents now boast roughly 70 to 75% multi-step success rates on complex tasks, which is a huge leap from the 40 to 50% we saw in 2024. For perspective, a Salesforce study still found agents succeed under 65% of the time on guided CRM tasks. These agents can plan out a chain of actions like a human would. But tools are only part of the story. But it's when things go wrong that most agents stumble. Our next test is all about that. Can agents recover when a link breaks or a page suddenly changes? Recovery is the true bottleneck. Even the best chain of actions will fail sometimes. Servers go down, pages change layout, captures pop up, or a tool API returns an error. Can the agent detect the failure, explain what went wrong, and retry or reroute? This is like an engine warning light, for example. Does the car pull over safely or just keep going? Researchers are tackling this. For example, a March 2025 paper introduces Raider, an agent that tightly integrates LLMs with grounding tools to automatically detect, explain, and recover from action-related issues Raider uses a ground, ask and answer issue loop to actively question its preconditions and select new tools when needed. The authors report that Raider's explanations improve recovery success. It can diagnose what broke and self-correct even in real-world tasks. Startups are also building analogous AI incident engineers. Vibranium Labs raised a $4.6 million seed for Vibe AI, an agent that runs 24-7 watching over IT systems. It plugs into instant management tools and automatically triages or fixes outages day or night. Similarly, Kiros launched with $21 million, is marketing an AI SRE teammate that scans your infrastructure, spots anomalies, and either resolves them autonomously or prepares the fix for a human. These agents boast the ability to handle typical failures in real time. Today, recovery success is still mixed. Industry anecdotes suggest agents succeed about 55 to 60% of the time at self-fixing, up from 20 to 30% a year earlier. Major weak points are 
simple challenges like captures or unexpected UI changes that can still stop an agent cold, often leading to human timeouts or frustrating retry loops. But hey, remember the promise we made in the beginning. We are offering our subscribers a detailed PDF that will educate you on different LLMs and their use cases. Drop your email using the form at the top of the description to get the PDF for free. You will also get free bonuses, tools and tricks to educate and train you about AI and its future. So people of our community are not the AI victims, but even partial recovery matters for uptime, which will be our next section. So to answer our earlier question, agents are finally learning to recover, but they still stumble on novel glitches. That's exactly what threatens long-term uptime. So let's see how they do in test number three. Uptime measures how long an agent can stay on shift. We track things like average interventions per hour or cost per completed task to quantify autonomy. The crown jewel is achieving sustained operation. To put this in perspective, imagine an AI running your systems overnight and fixing problems before you even wake up. We already have early wins here. For example, Verizon deployed a Gemini powered agent to assist call center representatives. According to Reuters, this Google Cloud AI cut down on call times and freed them up to sell products resulting in nearly 40% higher sales per agent. In other words, agents kept calls shorter and more productive, boosting revenue. That's real uptime payoff where agents are handling routine queries so humans can focus on big wins. Companies like Cirrus and Vibranium explicitly target 24-7 reliability. Cirrus's AI SRE runs continuous diagnostics on corporate networks, while Vibranium's Vibe AI monitors 170 million annual IT alerts non-stop. These systems are in pilot phases, but they report steady improvements. According to insiders, today's best pilots need on the order of one to two interventions per hour. Think of it like a quick human nudge, down from four to six per hour in 2023. We have also heard that in trials, some agents ran one to two hours continuously without help. Let's be honest, four plus hour stretches are still rare, but the trend is positive. So with tools improving, recovery ramping up and uptime creeping ahead, are agents finally becoming a real thing in 2026? Keep that question in mind because we are moving towards the scoreboard now. Pulling it all together, we see clear progress. On tools, Project Mariner's 83.5% on Web Voyager tasks and MCP Zero's smart tool discovery show we're hitting the 70 to 75% success range, climbing from roughly 40 to 50% in 2024. In recovery, the picture is more mixed. Raider and startups like Vibranium and Kirus indicate recovery rates have doubled or tripled versus last year, but we're only around 55 to 60% versus our 70% goal. And do you know what? US-based research research and advisory company, Gartner also notes only a fraction of agentic claims hold water. Finally, uptime, agents now manage about 65 to 70% of tasks end-to-end -end in pilot studies like Verizon's 40% sales lift is an external indicator of uptime impact. The best deployments see around one to two hour autonomy, still shy of the four plus hour ideal. In relative terms, tools and uptime have accelerated fastest while recovery lags. This shows that agents in 2026 are closer than ever to full autonomy. They're definitely stronger than in 2024, yet a real driverless level like consistent 4 plus hour uptime, 80% plus chain success and 70% plus recovery hasn't fully arrived. Our verdict till now is that agents are not 100% real yet, but the evidence is strongest we've seen. The gap has narrowed dramatically since 2024. We're at a point when in narrow domains like a routine customer support workflow, a well-tuned agent might pass for autonomous, but in broad, open-ended scenarios, they still occasionally stall or need rescue. It's like being at level three autonomy in cars where we have impressive demos, but still a supervisory human required. With all that being said, you might be thinking, what's coming next? So keep an eye on Q2 2026 targets. Look for signs like can agents hit more than 80% success chaining five plus steps, more than 70% recovery on real failures, and four plus hours stable runtime. If projects like Gemini and those AI SRE startups keep iterating and adopt more robust tooling, we could see narrow domain passes by mid-2027. In short, the finish line is in sight. We just need one more push. When tools, recovery and uptime all pass their thresholds, agents stop being impressive demos and start replacing entire workflows. That's when industries shift overnight. The 2024 agents were fascinating experiments. The 2025 agents are production ready in specific domains. The 2026 agents might just change everything. Want to dive deeper into the stages of AI development and what comes after agents achieve true autonomy? Check out our Stages of AI and Kurzweil playlist where explore the timeline 
line from here to artificial general intelligence and why getting agents right is just the beginning.